Hi, this is Muri reporting from Berlin, and this is part three of my uh, using React hooks with D3 series. And in this video, I want to show you how to um, add an X and a Y axis uh, to your chart. And um, yeah, before I start, I have two things to say. The first one is uh, I am uploading uh, the code from this series to GitHub. So um, I'll add the link to the description. Um, this is uh, where you can uh, check out the code and play around with it if you like. And the important thing to note is that each session is living um, in a branch here. So uh, let me know what you think. And the second thing is, um, sorry about the audio quality of my last two videos. I am currently using a different microphone, um, but I'm still even looking for, a, for an even better one. Um, so let me know what you think about uh, the audio quality of this video. And in the last video, I was explaining how to draw a curved line chart, as you can see here. And I was also explaining what a path element is and how we basically need to uh, shape uh, our path element with the help of the line function from D3. So uh, let's start with the x-axis of our line chart here. And I'm just going to go ahead and say import axis bottom from D3. And then I'm just going to go here and say const x, x axis equals axis bottom. And uh, this is a function. And as you can see here, axis bottom actually expects something called uh, a scale. So a scale is a bit tricky to explain. It is actually a function or a helper that uh, transforms an input value to something else, which is usually um, needed for the visual representation of that value. So uh, if you look at the line I have here um, to define the x values uh, for my line I have here, I am uh, basically mapping an index value uh, to something times 50 because I know that my um, SVG is 300 pixels wide and I want to render a dot every 50 pixels. I want to basically scale my um, value, which is the index of a value in my data array, uh, I want to scale it by 50 to use it in a visual representation of that data. And uh, scale is basically that, but it can do much more than that. Now I am going to uh, generate a scale function. And uh, I'm actually going to use it for uh, this line first before um, passing it to the axis, which also uh, requires a scale. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a scale. And for that, I will import scale linear from D3. And here I'm going to say const x scale equals scale linear. And this is a function where I have to define two things. And the first thing is called the domain. This is uh, basically our input values. We want to uh, scale up or down. And um, and I know in this case that I want to uh, scale my index values and the range of my index values, I know it is basically zero to six. And I can just write it like that. I can just say zero to six. I want to scale values from zero to six up to the range, which is basically the visual representation of the data. And it is from zero to 300. So if it is zero, I want it to be zero. And if it is six, I want it to be uh, 300. And if it's something, something in the middle, I want it to be something in the middle of zero and 300. And, it's, and instead of writing six here, I could also just write data length minus one, which is also six. So I can just basically add or remove uh, numbers here from my data array and it will still work. So now I'm going to make use of this scale I have defined here earlier. And uh, for that, I'm going to replace this part here where I am multiplying the index times 50 uh, for its uh, visual representation. And I am going to say x scale index instead. So I'm going to pass the index value into that scale. And if I save, nothing is actually going to change because uh, the results are the same. But if I, for example, replace the range I have defined here to uh, 200, the last dot of my line will actually be rendered at 200. So there is now a mapping of 0 to 0 and 6 to 200. 
And this is how the scale works. I will just quickly revert this value back to 300. And then uh, just for good measure, I'm also going to uh, create a Y scale, uh, which I'm going to use for the Y values of my line chart here. And for that, I'm going to say const Y scale equals scale linear. And here again, I have to define the domain and the range, the domain being the uh, input values. And the input values, um, I will just say, are going to be from 0 to 75, because I know that the values in my data array, they go up to 75. And I want to map these values to the range, which is going to be the output values. Um, and the range is going to be from 150 to 0. So um, as I've told in the last video, my SVG is 150 pixels high. And I want to map 0, the value 0, to 150 because the origin of my SVG is here. And, and I want to um, map 0 values to the very bottom, which is going to be here. Now I will make a use of this Y scale and just put it right here and say Y scale value. And this expression I can actually just write like this, Y scale, and also uh, this expression right here from the last session, my line. And uh, now, as you can see, we have a slightly different chart because uh, in our Y scale, we actually defined that the maximum value here we have uh, defined as 75 is going to be at the position zero and a zero is the very top of my SVG. And if I were to uh, say, okay, I want to put 150 here also, it will be uh, kind of like, or exactly like it was before. So now that we have defined our scales, we can now continue with the axis bottom function, which uh, like I said, requires a scale. And uh, we will just pass our X scale uh, we have defined earlier. And what we need to do next is we have to basically um, tell D3 where to position our uh, axis in our SVG. Unfortunately, uh, it's not obvious or it's not that easy. Uh, there are multiple approaches. Um, what I personally like to do is because I know that I will only need a single X or Y axis in my SVG, I just uh, like to prepare a group element in my um, SVG with the class name X axis, for example. And this is where I want to render my um, X axis into. And for that, uh, I need to do the following. I go ahead and say, hey, D3, um, select the element in my SVG with the class X axis and call my X axis on it, like summon my X axis into it, basically. Um, this call function is basically similar to this line. It is like saying X axis uh, with a selection, this. So X axis usually, or just requires a selection where you want to uh, render it. And um, this call function is basically saying, hey, uh, call this X function, um, X axis function with the current selection I have right here. So now let's see what happens uh, when I save this. Yeah, you can now see I have uh, an axis, but it's actually positioned on the top. Uh, why is that? Um, axis bottom, actually, uh, what it does is position the ticks of an axis on the bottom side. So it doesn't automatically position an axis on the uh, bottom edge of um, your SVG. So to fix the positioning of my x-axis, uh, I will do the following. You could do this however you like. I go ahead and say um, I want to style my x-axis um, and give it the property transform translate y 150 uh, pixels, like so. And if I save that, Actually, everything uh, is gone, and I will explain why. Um, let's see what happens if I add overflow visible to my SVG. Yeah, now you can see the axis was actually just hidden 
um, outside of my SVG, which is okay. But why is my line here? It should not be moving, right? I just styled my uh, axis. This is happening because first I am rendering uh, an X axis in my uh, group element with the class X axis. You can see it is here. And what uh, D3 or axis bottom is doing is it is generating a bunch of elements like ticks or the domain inside that G element. And there is actually also a path element rendered in that X axis. And what I am doing or what is happening later is that I am fetching all the path elements which are currently existing in my SVG and using them to draw my line. So basically what is happening is my code here, what, which I've written, it is taking the line of my X axis, which should be here and using it for itself to uh, render a line. I think it will be more obvious if I comment out this line here or this block. Um, you can now see there is a black line on our axis and there is uh, still a path element inside our um, group element uh, where we render our x-axis into. So this path element all and all these ticks, they come from D3. They are generated by this x-axis uh, or x-bottom function. And uh, what is happening here later is I am fetching all the path elements which are already existing and synchronizing them with the data I have. And uh, for that, D3 is actually fetching the path element, which is actually in our X axis. And we don't want that. We uh, want to adjust our selectors. So in order to fix this problem, uh, I will uh, adjust the selectors. And I will not say select all the path elements you find, but select all the elements with the class line you find in my SVG and synchronize them with data and also attach the attribute um, class um, line to my new and updating elements or path elements in this case. So if I save this, you will see I have my line where it belongs and also the x-axis where it belongs. So now I'm going to do the same with the y-axis, which I will position on the right side so I want to use axis right. And uh, then I'm going to call this const y axis equals axis right. And here I'm going to pass the y scale. Then I am going to create another group element for my y axis, like so. And then I am going to say, hey, uh, D3, select all the elements, or select the y-axis in this case, uh, transform it with uh, translate x and 300 pixels, so it goes to the very right of my SVG, and call y-axis on it, summon the y-axis inside it. Let's see what happens. Ta-da, now you can see I have an x-axis, which goes from uh, 0 to 6. I will add some more PRs here, like so. Yeah, you can now see it goes from 0 to 6 and from 0 to 150. One more thing before I wrap up this video. I don't like that my x-axis has uh, so many ticks here. I only have seven values in my data array, but I have more than seven ticks. Uh, how can I fix that? I can go ahead and add this to my x bottom function. I can say ticks. And here I can define how many ticks I want to render. I can say seven. Or I can also just say data length, which is also seven. And I can also format them with tick format. I can say uh, the values you're getting, which are the, uh, which is the index in this case. I can just say index um, index plus one. So now it will not show zero to six, but it will show one to seven. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I wish I could have uh, kept it a bit shorter. Um, I hope still it was worth your while. 
And um, I don't know what I will do in the next video. Maybe I'll go into uh, grids or I'll go into responsiveness or transitions. Um, let me know what you think. Hope to see you then. Bye.